Okay, welcome to this uh, evening. It's a great pleasure to, to welcome Phil Zuckerman, who's a professor of sociology from uh, Pitzer College in California. He's currently a visiting professor in Aarhus, where he just told me he's studying uh, the, the kids who not go through, do not go through uh, confirmation in Denmark. So that's uh, something I'm looking forward to reading more about. Um, for those of you who don't know him, he's done a lot of work on the sociality of religions, especially focusing on those of us who do not believe. So who are we and why do we not believe in gods? And in Denmark, of course, he's very well known for his book, Society Without Gods, or Samfund Uden Gud, about Scandinavia and all these people here who do not believe in, in anything. So um, he's going to tell us about atheists, agnostics, and the irreligious, and what the social sciences have to say about us. And before he starts, let me just say that he'll be speaking for 45 minutes or so, and then we'll have time for questions for about an hour, and I'll be the moderator. So if you have questions for Phil after his talk, please come up to this side of the room. Thank you. And please welcome Phil Zuckerman. Mange tak. Yeah, oh, oh. Jeg er virkelig glad til at være her. Yeah. Uh, men min dansk er ikke godt, og uh, min, uh, min børn snart godt dansk, men min datter uh, har kommet til København, og hun ikke forstår København speaking Danish. <laughs> so uh, I thought if she can't understand. So yeah, yes, just, I'm going to speak in English, and I'll try to speak slowly and clearly, but you all probably speak better English than I do. So uh, Thanks, Dinos, for inviting me. It's really a pleasure. Atheism and Denmark, my two great loves, <laughs> combined in one night. Woo! It doesn't get any better. But I, I have to say, it's a little bit strange for me uh, to address a group of atheists in Denmark. And I, it just struck me as odd. I, I, it seemed to be sort of like Saudi Arabians against snowmen. <laughs> or uh, I... I, I <laughs> Or I thought, you know, Swiss people against surfing. Um, I, I just, my, my whole image of Scandinavia it is, that it, is that it's just one of the most secular places on earth. And, and that's what I did a lot of my research about. So when I heard that there was this group, you know, it struck me as a little interesting. Uh, Merkley, I think you would say. Um, I usually speak in the United States to atheist groups. I've been invited to a lot of uh, big Freedom From Religion Foundation and Americans United Against the Separation of Church and State and blah, blah, blah. And I mean, there in the United States, religion is a lot stronger than it is in Denmark. Uh, religious people and religious groups have very real political power. Um, religion is probably the main source of community in the United States for most Americans. And the vast majority of Americans definitely equate religion with morality. It's, those are the same. And I think all three of those things are very different. I find that, that religion has very little political power here in Denmark. Of course, you may tell me otherwise. But I, as an outsider, it seems as though uh, uh, religious groups, if they exist at all, don't have much sway politically. Um, in fact, I just was shown a survey by a colleague at Aarhus um, oh no, this was a different one. When they ask people from all over the world, do you want you know, religion to be part of your politics? Do you want your, your political leaders to be most religious? Danes come in last place in the whole world. They don't want religion and politics mixed. And religion doesn't seem to be much of a source of communal engagement in Denmark, uh, as evidenced by the fact that you have perhaps the lowest rates of weekly church attendance in the world and maybe in the history of Christendom. And at nearly every Dane that I've ever spoken with, even the most religious, do not equate religiosity with morality. It seems as though most Danes understand that morals and ethics are separate from religion and can exist separately from religion, and you can be an atheist and still be moral, and you can be Christian and still be like the Pope. So it, it's, you know, so... Um, the current pope, I should say. Um, and in fact, this was the survey that was just brought to me by a, a colleague at Aarhus. People from countries all over the world were asked 
you know, whether you're religious or not, you know, what are your feelings about religion? And there were, there were a couple specific questions. Is, and one was, do you think religion overall causes more harm or more good in the world? Another question had to do with, do you think strongly religious people are intolerant? And of all the countries, Denmark came to the top in saying, we feel that religion does more harm than good, and we feel that strongly religious people are intolerant. So I've been asking myself, what in the world do atheists do in Denmark? You have it so good. Um, so I assume, and you tell me if I'm wrong, I assume that maybe you are part of this group because you're a little bit concerned about the growing strength of a radicalized or politicized Islam and the intolerance that may come with it, threats to freedom of speech, threats to women's rights, gay rights, and democracy in general. I don't know. Maybe you're part of this group because you actually are concerned that, about this mixing of church and state you have here in Denmark, uh, that you know... You, People's taxes go to support the church, and even if you quit the church, still in a certain way, your tax money is going to the government, which the, the church, the Folke Kirk, is part of the government. And maybe you don't like that your kids uh, have time taken out of their weekly class in the seventh year to study uh, religious, uh, Christianity towards their confirmation right in the heart of the school day. Maybe you don't like that the king or queen has to be a Lutheran according to your constitution. I, I, I assume you have some of these issues. But maybe it's none of that. Maybe you simply have an interest in atheism, agnosticism, and irreligion. And it's that last one I've decided to tailor my speech to. So those of you that were expecting a harsh attack against Islam, you will be disappointed. And those of you that were expecting a harsh critique of the Folke Kirk, you will be sorely disappointed. I think the Folke Kirk is a nice institution. Um, that does a good job of creating secular people. And, um, <laughs> and uh, so with this last one, I hope you have a general interest in things about secularity, and that's what I'm going to address tonight. And so what I thought I would do, and I'm aiming for 45 minutes, it may be a little less, because I've never given this talk before, so I don't have it down pat. It may, I may go over a little bit, but I'm aiming for about 45 minutes just to present to you some information, and I hope that information spurs some questions, or some comments, or critiques, and then we can discuss, and I can answer, or you can tell me how I've got it wrong. Um, most talks about atheism, I find, their favorite topic is actually religion. <laughs> um, they like to debunk religion and talk about how evil it is. Uh, they like to critique the Bible and talk about how silly it is and how religious authority is a problem. And, and again, I, I'm not going to do much of that tonight. Um, instead, I want to talk about atheists, the actual atheists and agnostics and secular people themselves. Who are they? What do we know about them? And so before I, and I have a sort of top 10 list, and then I thought, uh oh, it's atheists, it should probably be a top 9 or a top 13, <laughs> because top 10 is just so, but I stuck with top 10, sorry. But before I give you the sort of top 10 details about we, what we know, I, I'm, I'm trained as a sociologist, I, I travel in those circles, so I'm most comfortable with sociologists and anthropologists, psychologists are a little weird, but... I'm getting to like them more and more. You know the difference between sociology and psychology, of course. Uh, sociologists are people who have problems with society, and psychologists are people who have problems with themselves. Um, <laughs> but anyway, you'll find that's kind of true. But I'm not much into philosophy, and certainly not much into theology. So I'm in the social sciences. And, and so in talking about what we know about atheists and agnostics, I have to have a disclaimer. And the truth is, we don't know much. The study of non-religion and non-religious people is really in its infancy. Um, we've been studying religion for, you know, uh, you know, sort of consciously studying religion systematically for over uh, probably 150 years, we being social scientists. I mean, the founders of sociology were deeply interested in religion and wrote a tremendous amount about it except for perhaps Marx. Um, the early anthropologists, deeply interested in religion. In fact, describing and analyzing religion was usually how they made a living. Uh, uh, psychology, 
Long history of studying religion and religiosity. In fact, every college, every university uh, on earth has some sort of department of religious studies of one form or another. There are a zillion journals devoted just to the study of religion. I mean, journal of religious dance and journal of religious cooking probably. I mean, any aspect of religion is being studied and has been studied for decades. But very little has been paid attention to by social scientists to irreligion or secularity, the absence of religiosity. People who live their lives without religious faith or without participating in religious communal activities or religious rituals. But that started to ch it's starting to change. Um, in the last 10 years, there's actually been sort of an active effort by social scientists to take secularity seriously. People like Barry Cosman, Ariel Kaiser, Frank Pasquale, Robert Altemeyer, Bruce Hunsberger, Luke Galen, Karen Huang, Darren Shirkat, David Vose, Benjamin Bait Halami, and others. I had to mention their names because this is being filmed, and I <laughs> wanted them to know that I appreciate their work. There's been a group now of people starting to really treat this as a subject worthy of, of, of social science. So while we don't know much, this is where we're at so far. The top 10 things social scientists have come to know about atheists, agnostics, and irreligious people in general. 